Hello and all, welcome to a Galaxy Man Show interview show. Uh, so for today's guest is this incredible singer and songwriter known by the name of uh, Karen Dunn. Hi, Karen. Hi. I'm good, how are you? Yeah, really good, thanks. I just want to say first up, thank you so much for taking the time to join my show, Karen. It's such a pleasure having you on today. Uh, to people that don't know who you are, if you can give like a bit of backstory about who you are and what you do, and then we'll dive right into the questions. Sure thing. Um, well, first of all, thank you for rescheduling with me as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I'm a singer songwriter from Ireland. I'm also a music educator. So I, uh, I teach piano, guitar, ukulele, all that stuff. Um, I released an EP a few years ago. It's on Spotify and I released a couple of singles last year as well. So um, at the moment I am delving into the TikTok world. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, enjoying it um so yeah that's pretty much me yeah karen alice music if, if anybody wants to find out where my stuff is across the board awesome so we'll dive right into the very first question now karen so you've okay. actually created this incredible original song called anybody listening uh what was it like getting to create this song and like what's the whole meaning behind anybody listening Oh, thank you so much. Oh, it's so, I'm so glad you like it. Um, so this was a really weird one because um, this is a song that came to me in a dream. I know that sounds wacky, but it did. It came to me in a dream. I had this dream that um, uh, the singer, his name is uh, Stuart Adamson. He's from the band Big Country, this 80s band. I had a dream that he was singing this particular song in this really dark, dingy cellar. And... Uh, I, I don't remember what the verse was like, but I remember the chorus. Um, Anybody listening? Oh. And um, then I ended up writing the song and it ended up being about um, kind of, I suppose, what it's like being in lockdown for the last year for everybody, where we're kind of, we feel like we're on our own, but everybody, everybody's on their own, but we're all in it together. So that's kind of where I went with that. Yeah. So that was... Uh, that was uh, where it came from. Sorry, I'm getting lots of love on my end here from, from my friends who have joined. So thanks, guys. <laughs> so on to the very next question, Karen. So you also created an original song called Speak. Uh, such an incredible song, another incredible song of yours. What was it like getting to create Speak? And what's the whole meaning behind Speak? Oh, thank you so much. Um, I'm, I'm glad you like that one as well. So I wrote those quite close together this winter. And that one was uh, the product of um, reading this book called The Silent Patient. I don't know if you've heard of it. It was It's one of those books that you literally inhale because you it's so it's so addictive. Um, but it was about this girl and um, I'm not giving anything away because this is in the plot of the book anyway, uh, on the back of it. Uh, so it's not a spoiler, but she commits this crime. Um, but they can't convict her because she doesn't speak ever after it happens. So this particular therapist thinks that he can get her to um, to open up by letting her paint because she's an artist. And there's one scene where she just, she gets her hands on some paints and she just goes nuts. And uh, as I was reading that chapter, I uh, the words um, speak out, cry loud came into my head. And then I just went with it from there. So I wrote that the book is about her. Um, her journey so um and about trying to trying to express how you feel i suppose it's where it came from so yeah awesome. i was happy so, with that one so, you, so i'm sorry very next question karen so what you so you've also created an incredible single uh called almost what was it like getting to create almost and what's the whole meaning behind this song Oh, thank you. Yeah, almost seems to be a bit of a favorite, <laughs> especially on, on TikTok. It just seems to have been like, everyone just seems to like it. Everyone, I think everyone likes a breakup song. Um, so yeah, I wrote that last year. And um, last January, I think, oh. uh, before all this lockdown stuff happened. And it was, yeah, it was, a, it was at the time, it was my way of um, processing a breakup. And um, it was about a relationship that was almost perfect, almost everything, but there was something not quite, there was something missing. And uh, it's about that kind of, that almost there, it's almost perfect feeling. And um, yeah, I got to, I, got, I didn't produce it. So I, got, I got to record it in the studio and, um, and uh, it's, yeah, it's gotten some great response from people. So yeah, <laughs> there's people here singing the lyrics. It's gas. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. So I'll say your next question. So you have also created an original song called Marionette. 
another incredible song of yours. What was it like getting to create Marionette? And like, what's the whole meaning behind this song? Oh, thank you. You picked my favorite songs that I've written to talk about. So thank you. Yeah, so Marionette, I wrote that, um, oh God, it was in 2013 or 14, I wrote that. And that's probably the song that I'm most proud of. That probably has the most... Um, significant kind of meaning I suppose and I was the lyrics are don't forget I'm not your marionette don't forget I'm no one second best and I when I was writing it I suppose I wanted to get across that you don't have to it's a I was feeling pulled in all these different directions and I felt like I was people pleasing and doing things just because other people wanted me to and I suppose this song is kind of a message to just don't be afraid to stand on your own and and, and be who you are and not be dictated by other people so yeah, well, that's that's very next question. So you have also created an original song called Never Alone. Um, what was it like getting to create Never Alone? And what's the whole meaning behind Never Alone? Oh, wow. I, I didn't know. I didn't realize that you found that one as well. So that one, um, again, that was one I wrote in lockdown last year. Um, uh, a lot of the songs actually that we're talking about were, were written in uh, during lockdown. Um, and I literally... I, 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 that was when everything was really scary in Ireland, especially because we didn't really know what was going on and we all just felt so isolated. And um, I wanted to write a song that said, we're not alone, we still have each other kind of thing. Um, and yeah, I, I did a little kind of um, a home production of it and everybody seemed to really resonate with it because we were all feeling the same way. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really happy with that. Oh, thanks guys, <laughs> Sorry. reading my comments here. <laughs> so on to the very next question. So you have also created an original song called Wings. What was it like getting to create Wings? And what's the whole meaning behind Wings? Wings. So that's an old song. Um, I wrote that, prob not old, but it's like I wrote that at around 2013, 2014, around the same time as Marionette. And I wrote it... Um, because at a time when I was feeling stuck and I wanted to get the message across that, you know, um, it's better to just take a chance and take a risk on something rather than um, uh, feeling stuck and trapped forever. And it's better to take a risk and uh, have it fail because it will lead to something rather than being too scared to actually use your wings. So, yeah, so I haven't, uh, haven't thought about that song in a while, actually. Yeah. Okay. So I'll say my very next question. So what made you decide as like, as, a, as an artist and as like yourself, like what made you just decide, hey, I want to start pursuing music in the first place and who would be your like most inspirational music, like artist music wise? Okay. Oh, great question. Um, so I would have, I played piano from the time I was really young. Never, ever thought I'd be a singer ever, ever, ever. I loved singing, but I didn't, never sang really um, outside of doing musicals and stuff. And um, uh, so one of my friends has just written Swift. And that's so true because my voice, um, I never thought I was strong, a strong enough singer to be a singer songwriter. But when I was about 18 or 19, I was really into Jewel, the singer songwriter. And I loved her, her way with words. And I was really into her poetry and um, she has this incredible voice and I said okay I started writing songs and I was really happy with the songs but I said oh I don't really have the voice to go along with it and then Taylor Swift came out and I was like well her voice isn't like this big belter voice so maybe I can maybe I can do that too and um yeah and then there was Dido was out, out around the same time as well and some other singers like that that had really nice voices but they were um they weren't like the Mariah Carey's or whatever um and yeah, I just, it snowballed from there. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm sorry, next question. So what does performing like music mean to you? Like, especially as an artist? Oh, that's a great question. Um, well, for me, it's, it's so tied in with my identity, with who I am. And it's, it's a form of expression, you know, even though it's, uh, even though it's my job now, it's definitely such a massive part of who I am. And it's, I suppose, my way of leaving my mark on the world. And it's also, especially through the last year and a half, it's been a huge coping mechanism for me. Um, so yeah, I would say it's just, I don't, I honestly don't know who I'd be without it or where I'd be. So it's very, very integral part of my life and who I am, so. 
So yeah. on to the very next question. So if you could work with any top three music artists in the music industry, who would they be and why? Oh, that was such a hard question. Um, okay, so uh, I would have to say Jewel because she's where it all started for me. I would just love to pick her brain. Her lyrics are just, oh my God, amazing. Um, and I would also love her to teach me how to yodel as well, because I would love to be able to yodel and I can't. Um, the second one is Bruce Springsteen, just because he he's such a legend. And um, again, from a songwriting perspective, I'd love to pick his brain and just, uh, yeah, he'd be amazing. And then the third one is not Taylor Swift, who I know <laughs> most people here will think it's actually Casey Musgraves. I would love to work with her because she's so... Even though I do love country music, she's so different to me in that she's a lot more out there than I am. Uh, maybe it's my Irishness that's makes me a bit more reserved. I don't know, but she's. I would love to. I would love to work with her because I think she would pull me out of my comfort zone. So, yeah, Casey, Jewel, and Bruce Springsteen. So, on to the very next question. So, what have you learned about yourself as a person, like especially during COVID? Oh my God, so many things. Um, the biggest thing I learned about myself is that I'm such a homebody. I'm such an introvert. Like even though my job, you know, forces me to be extroverted, I am actually, I'm very introverted and I need a lot of time on my own. And I'm very comfortable with that time uh, on my own to be home. And um, uh, another thing is that I am addicted to true crime. <laughs> <laughs> That's the second thing. So yeah, introvert and true crime, addicted, podcasts all day, documentaries, whatever, I can't get enough of it. <laughs> <laughs> so on to the very, very next question. So what are like the positive and negative sides into creating music in the music industry? And how do you get through those like negative moments as an artist? God, that's a really good question. Um, so I can only speak from my own experience and from uh, living in Ireland. For me, uh, um, like it is very, a negative would be, it's very difficult here in Ireland to make a living from original music, which is why very early on, I decided to do cover gigs, weddings, to teach, to get my income from uh, from doing music in other ways so that I could pursue original music and have it just be about the love of it and have not have it be uh, not have that pressure of fi uh, financial a financial aspect of it um, and I, the the I suppose having having that makes the gives me the freedom to kind of um, pursue original music and promote it uh, at, at more of a leisurely kind of um, pace and the positives are oh there's so many positives like I, I love it I get to meet people I get to travel again this is when COVID didn't exist um I, I absolutely genuinely just love my job so much and I couldn't um I couldn't imagine doing anything else so the positives much more outweigh the negatives definitely awesome so I'm sorry last question so what's like next for you like music wise like for the rest of 2021 that you would like to announce on the show? Well, the biggest thing at the moment is I have a gig. Um, this is obviously for our Irish listeners, <laughs> our viewers. I have a, a show, an original music show in a theatre, um, Gory Little Theatre in August. I'll have dates for that on my page. Um, I will hopefully be getting back into the studio, probably not till the winter, but I am going to release another single. And um, yeah, I do live streams on TikTok all the time at the moment. Um, so if people want to follow me there, um, I'll, I'm, I'm very present on social media. So that's the best place to find me at the moment. So Awesome. Yeah. So would you like to perform one of your songs on the show, by the way, Karen? <laughs> you didn't tell me I was going to be doing that. <laughs> yeah, I sure will. Um, I just have to get my guitar. Uh, give me a minute. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Of course. Okay. So, is there any in particular you would like to hear? Uh, any original song would be amazing. 
Okay, cool. So I'll do almost um, my single, which is on uh, Spotify. And um, yeah, do you want me to sing the whole thing? Yeah, if you want. Yeah. <laughs> okay, everybody in here is saying almost, so I guess that's decided for me anyway. <laughs> I don't know if you can see these comments, can you? I can, yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so this is almost. I can barely bring myself to write this. I fell off, but nothing's ever been like this. But you didn't run to me and I couldn't come to you That's when I knew it was almost worth it Perfect on paper but not when it came to it Almost always We would be together from now to forever But we both know it was almost I didn't want to be the girl who cried wolf. It's irrelevant now, now that I miss you so much And I love our story, so part of me thinks it's not over It was almost worth it Perfect on paper, but not when it came to it almost always. We would be together from now to forever, but we both know it was almost. You did a run to me, I couldn't come to you. You did run to me, I couldn't come to you. You did run to me, I couldn't come to you. You did run to me, I couldn't come to you. That's when I knew it was almost worth it. Perfect on paper, but not when it came to it almost always. We would be together from now to forever almost worth it. Perfect on paper, but not when it came to it almost always. We would be together from now to forever, but we both know. Yeah, we both know it was almost. <laughs> yes, Karen, yes. Well, Karen, <laughs> thank you so much, Karen. It's been such a pleasure having you on the show today. Do you have like any last final thoughts that you'd like to say to your viewers on the show? Uh, well, first of all, thank you so much, Jacob, for having me on here. I love talking, so I'll always <laughs> agree to it. Um, do I have any final thoughts? Um, just if you, if there's, if there's something that you really want to do, just do it. That's that's something that I, I feel I really feel like saying to people at the moment. If there's something that you feel passionate about, don't worry about if it's if it's good enough or what people will think. Just do it. Just life is way too short. Please just do it. Um, and also, yeah, find me um, on TikTok, um, YouTube, Spotify, everything like that. Um, uh, yeah. So that's it.